So here we are, back in the bathroom, day 11, I do believe it is, and today we have brought, I can't point my finger backwards, we have brought the expert again, that is Wayne. Wayne, what are you going to be an expert in today? Uh, plumbing. So uh, we're going to put in the new pipework, uh, the pipework we took out some weeks ago, and now we're going to reinstate it all in plastic. So one of the first jobs I'm going to do is work out where the shower is going to be mounted, bring the pipework across from the feeds coming into the bathroom, and then round to the uh, hand wash basin. So first job, a lot of measuring up and a lot of marking out. Should we crack on? Let's do it. So my job this morning is uh, putting one of these together, which is a sink or a basin, bathroom basin and cabinet. Right, we better get on with that, hadn't we? Oh, apologies for the hair this morning and the unshavenness. Um, just all gone a bit bored or something. Let's have a look at those instructions then. So we've got to uh, drill the tiles now, we've marked out a couple of places for where the cupboard was going and we've decided on the, the left hand location. Uh, so I've got a tile drill bit in my drill and I've got my drill selected to drill and not hammer because we don't want to put any pressure on the tiles. One of the things about these tiles we've noticed is you've been tiling the brown on the back or the terracotta uh, and this makes a lot of dust. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set off and put a little score mark in there with my tile. If you find that your tile drill bit is slipping over your tiles, what you can do is just put a bit of insulation tape over uh, and that stops it um, slipping about as much. So because of the dust that created, I'm going to whack the hoover on, I'm going to drill through, pop through the tile. We know it's plasterboard at the other side uh, and therefore I'll be able to go straight through the plasterboard with the uh, same drill bit as well. So let's have a do, see what happens. Might have seemed to take a long time to drill such a small hole, but if it takes me two minutes to drill such a small hole in a tile, it's a lot less time than me putting a lot of pressure on them. It's very gentle, and a lot of pressure on with a drill, snapping the tile, having to then take the tile off and uh, replace the tile. And again, at the end of the day, we've got to drill it again. So steady away, Nice, little bit of pressure, you heard the uh, noise change at the end when I was just getting to the last bit of the tile, really eased off and just let the drill pull through the hole. What's going on here then Wayne? So we're levelling the wall up, um, if you uh, look at the top, the top of the wall is very much far out towards the bottom of the wall. So we've just stuck a piece of timber on, that timber's now straight and that wall is very far out. So I'm going to put a, a piece of timber on in the other side now where you're stood and uh, level across and see uh, if we can make as good a wall as possible. Flat, right angled, we're going to see. So we've got another one of these pieces of wood and the nearly floor to ceiling and with the pipe that we've got in the bottom we're just going to trim the end off. So I'm just going to measure it up in that corner. What type of wood do we use? Uh, we're using what we would call 3 to 3 by 2 scant which is about 63mm by 40mm but Cheap enough. CLS. CLS. And what does CLS stand for? Absolutely no idea at all. Do you want you? No, no uh, idea. Uh, you employed me as a plumber. <laughs> <coughs> Mickey knows what it's called. Canadian lumber stud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you doing, Wayne? Uh, forming up the holes. So we've got uh, a number of holes in and around the... Uh, it's a very bad exterior wall that seems to have been built. So, so we'll a bit of form in and uh, stop the wind blowing through it from the cavity. So you're gonna shake and foam, you're gonna fill the hole. <laughs> I think that was shaking back at me. Here's where it's sat on his bum again. Not doing now, he's always resting, waiting for a cover. That isn't coming. Plumbing in the shower. 
So we're bringing some pipework across here in plastic and then the fittings you'll see which we made before we've now cut down and we are piping them in to the mains water supply. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to join two pieces of copper together uh, on a right angle. We've got some fitting here and we've got some copper pipe. So we've used our pipe slice as we did previously, cut 200ml off the end and we're going to attach these two bits of copper pipe like that. And you can see closely up here where the pipe slice has been cutting through, it's dirty. So again, we go back to our little bit of emery cloth that we've had previously. I'll just rub this around, make it nice and shiny. Do you like the polish the end with? Absolutely. You should always have a nice polished end. There's one, do the other one. And it's actually putting very, very tiny grooves in the end, which is why we're going round and round rather than backwards and forwards, which is going to help this process. Of soldering. Now it's often also called sweat in a joint this because we're going to heat it up with our gas blowtorch and we're going to allow the solder to become warm, melt and then bond back to the two parts of the copper, one being inside the other. So these fittings we're using are a pre-soldered fitting, They're commonly known in the trade as a Yorkshire joint. And these have got inside here a pre-soldered ring. So as long as we heat it up, the solder will melt and bond the two bits together. Depending on what I see at the time, when the solder is heated up, I might add a little bit more solder on at the same time. So we just give it a little bit of scratch inside these fittings. I was always told to do that, which just bonds one for the, for the better. What we're going to do now on our nice clean end, we'll get a bit of this flux, just clean the end. Flux is a good word, isn't it? Flux is a very good word. And again, we're going to make sure that's going round. And this will disappear when it heats up, this will disappear. It's quite often, if you put too much on, is what cause the green of the pipe, if you've got any copper pipes at home and they're all green, that can be caused by too much flux. Interesting to know that any flux that's put onto a, a fitting, and we've no choice here, we've got to put flux on, but this is a shower fitting, so before we install the shower unit itself, we have to flush through the system to ensure all the flux is out. Because apparently that can damage your shower module, shower unit. How that does that, I've no idea. I'm not clever enough to know that. I just know that you've got to fire loads of water through, both hot and cold side. A bit like in a pub when they drain or clean the pipes out. So why do you use a copper piping instead of just the plastic? Uh, believe it or not, the shower company tells us we have to fix the shower unit in copper. And later on, when you see us put these pipes in place, you will find that um, you're not supposed to bend my pipe. <laughs> Oh, do you know how to work on it? Uh, the restriction at the back of it. Uh, so the copper pipe elbow, this elbow, yes, is a lot less than a plastic elbow. If you just wait there a moment, I shall show you. Uh, if you look at that one and you look at that one, it fits in a much smaller gap. And we've got to sneak it through some timber and we've got to put it through um, a piece of plastic as well. So smaller, smaller space. Right. Okay, so we've uh, planted in the vice. We've got our joint here, our 90 degree elbow, and you can see both sides of it there. We have some flux sticking out. I'm going to warm this up with a blowtorch. I'm going to watch for the flux becoming now liquefied and it'll drop off, ensuring it's very, very clean. 
and the flux also helps the solder go all the way around the joint because we've got to get it 360 degrees around this joint so I'm going to watch here and I'm going to watch here to make sure copper sorry solder appears on the copper and if not I'm going to touch it with a little bit of extra solder just because we're going behind things and we're going in so turn the torch on light it up tip the glue on the joint and it will probably take about 90 seconds to heat up And the flux is going to look at now. And we should start seeing the solder coming out on the other side. There we go. So it's coming out on this side here. And this here is coming out here as well. So joint done. You don't have to put the extra solder on. But while we've got it. We'll do it. Hi folks, well silver box is tired or so he's fine at home. Uh, and that's alright because I'm just doing a little bit of pipe work, but I just thought I'd bring you up to date with uh, what was going on. And um, down here you can see that uh, there's some pipe work going in and uh, we're connecting up to the shower. And I'm gonna bring the coal across there now and um, bring it right away across uh, behind the bath as well so i'll just uh, stop for a moment and uh, and press on okay so as earlier joining in to our old feed coming into the bathroom and we run across there and then come up from that feed into our shower which is what we we're doing earlier on we now finish that and then you'll see there's also two T's coming off that, that'll be for the bath very shortly. Either side of the waste pipe for the bath. We'll go to the next grey pipe, which will be the waste for the hand wash basin. Just secured the plastic pipe in the corner, just put a retaining screw in there. It's not doing very much, just stops some wobbling about. So you're going to come all the way down here. We've put a new joint on the grey pipe, so the grey pipe is now a little bit short because we've moved things about a bit. It's going to go into the corner and we've got to angle up for the hot, the cold and the waste coming into the bear. There's our holes from before, ready for the hand wash basin. We're very lucky really because as we're renovating the house we have actually got other rooms to use and store stuff. And one of the things that often concerns me is the assembly of the bath and the bath waste system. So let's have a look at uh, what I'm talking about. So you see here, we have the plug hole. And right on the top of the bath, because the bath is stood up, we have the overflow. And normally in your system, you buy one of these which is connected together. Phillips screw, not a posi drive. That pops out. And then you've got a couple of seals there. You can see one white seal and one black seal. And we're going to assemble that onto the steel of the bath. So what you can see here is I've siliconed the underside of the bath and I've also siliconed the seal that's going to go on the inside. Now this is very much overkill. It's not required. It's funny how some manufacturers tell you that silicon is required and some manufacturers tell you that no silicon is required. What you'll notice though is I've used clear silicon. The products that colour silicon will break down these rubbers or these fibre washers and it will eventually lead to a leak. So what we're going to do now, we're going to put all this together, screw it up, we'll ooze a bit of silicon out and then leaving it to dry for a 24 hour period that will be fully solid dry. We're not in a rush to put this bathroom in, we want it to be leak free. 